In our previous video, we've refactored our DAOs into a superclass called Plant Places DAO, and we also made a subclass called Offline Specimen DAO that extends Plant Places DAO. We've also made a stub that just basically prototypes what this class should do, and we made a unit test for it as well. So in this video, we're going to take the interface that we created, iSpecimen DAO, and then our stub implements. And we are going to add that interface to our actual implementation class. And we're going to start filling in the details so that we can interact with the database. Why do we want to implement an interface? Well, if we take a look at something like our test, and just a moment as I find that. There we go, it's up here. If we take a look at our test, we're going to see that we ate a variable that is the interface type and then we declare it to be the stub type. What's nice is that we can swap this object here with any class that implements that interface. So the interface gives us the, uh, the ability to change the actual uh, object type at a later point if we want to. And the value is there. We can start by prototyping with a stub and then we can build against that stub and then later we can come in here and create the actual implementation and very easily remove the stub and replace it with the actual implementation. So I'm going to add implements and then we're going to say I specimen DAO. As soon as I do that uh, it redlines me because a class that implements an interface is under contract to implement all of the methods of that interface. So I'm going to choose implement methods. We'll go ahead and select them all. And the first one we want to work on is the one called save. Now, by the way, another benefit of interfaces is we only need to javadoc the method at the interface level. Uh, it's assumed if we're implementing that method that we're also basically reusing that javadoc. We only need to change the javadoc if we make a material change in the method at this class level. So for save, uh, what I'm going to do, I get a specimen DTO, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to use content values. Values equals new content values. And alt enter, and uh, that will import content values. Content values is kind of like a hash map that we're going to use to save things into our database. Uh, as a matter of fact, what we can do is say, get writable database, and then insert. Okay, now we need, if, uh, sorry, let me go back so we can look at that signature again. Okay, we need a table name, a null column hack, which is just a, basically a random column, and then our content values. We can obtain each of these very easily. So first of all, the table name. Remember why we used constants before. Specimens, okay. Null column hack, we'll just pick one, like maybe location. Or we'll say, uh, let's say, um, latitude. That's fine. And then content values is that values variable that we've just created. So we're declaring the content values variable, and then we're inserting into the database. OK, I had some comments here. OK, collection to hold our data to insert. Okay, now the trick with uh, insert is that only after the row, or only during, at the time that the row is inserted, that is when we will get our local unique identifier. So I'm going to uh, hold uh, Control Alt V, which will assign that to a local variable in Android Studio, and we'll give it the name Cache ID because it's our local identifier, and then I'm going to say specimen dot set specimen cache ID and pass in that cache ID. That way we have the uh, locally the, the local unique identifier stored in this object in case we wish to use it later. Now all we need to do is fill out the rest of this values uh, collection. So I'm going to say values dot put and string key. Well okay we need the key and a value. Let's start with the value specimen dot get plant cache ID. Okay, and that will remind us that the value, uh, the, the key is going to be plant cache ID. And once again, it pays to use constants because you see it auto completes for me. I don't need to worry about spelling. Values.put 
Okay, we also have a plant GUID, as I recall. Plant GUID. And then specimen dot get plant GUID. Okay, and so this is our foreign key, and it's a bit redundant here because we have two foreign keys pointing to the same record. But we have to keep in mind, sometimes we're going to be online, and the plant will already be created. Other times we'll be offline without data access. We'll need to create the plant locally and then synchronize it later. Okay, uh, values dot put, and I'm going to say, uh, let's see, we have... Well, we, we likely at this point, because we're saving a new one, we won't yet have a GUID for the specimen. But I'll go ahead and say uh, values.put and then location, and then specimen.getLocation. Okay, we also have latitude, longitude, and photo. Values.put, latitude, specimen.getLatitude. Values.put, longitude specimen dot get longitude values dot put and then let's say description specimen dot get description and finally values dot put and then photo uh, or let's say I think it was picture URI there we go specimen dot get picture get uh, get photo that's that's good enough terminate with a semicolon and now we're all set just a little comment here, populate the collection. Okay, so now we're saving into the database and I choose save. Now what we can do is we can go to GPS a plant and when the user clicks on save, uh, let's see, do we have, we have take photo clicked, we have pause clicked. I don't know if we have yet made a method for um, clicking on the save button. I think we have not. So I'll take a look at the layout. GPS a plant, and let's go to design view. Okay, uh, all right, it's having trouble with that, but no problem, we can, we can figure it out. Let's take a look at our button, and our button is show save, that's not the one we want. Uh, take photo, that's not the one we want. The one we want is save, button save. Okay, I do not see an on-click attribute down here in BTN save. So I have not made one yet, so we'll go ahead and make one now. Android, colon, on click, whoops, click, equals, btn save, uh, let's say on btn save clicked. Or we could just say on save clicked, doesn't matter, we can make it anything we want, we just want to stick to the normal naming conventions. So on save clicked, camel case, I save that, I go back to the GPS of plant activity associated with that layout, and somewhere probably around where I have my other button, yeah, where I have my other button click handlers, I'm going to say public void paste. It's very important we make sure the spelling and the capitalization is exactly the same. View V. Okay. What we can do here is save the specimen. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend a long time in this class, so I'm going to go ahead and double click so we can look at it closely. And first of all, on save clicked okay first of all i need to make a uh, an attribute for that specimen dao so i specimen dao remember we always want to use the interface type as a variable auto import that we always want to use uh, make the variable type an interface type specimen dao terminate with a semicolon okay on create we're going to come down and we're going to say spend DAO equals new offline specimen DAO. And remember, we have to pass in a context, uh, an activity. In other words, the current object is a valid context. Terminate with a semicolon and save. Okay, so we have now declared and instantiated the specimen DAO. I'm going to come back down to my uh, on button save click or on save clicked. Okay, and I'm going to say specimen DAO dot save. And notice that it wants to accept a parameter of type specimen DTO. Okay, well, there's part two. I need to make that parameter, don't I? So let's hold this thought for just a second. We're going to say specimen DTO specimen equals new specimen DTO. 
data transfer object that transfers data across layers. Alt enter to organize imports. Enter. Okay, now I can say, let me rearrange my comments here. Create a DTO to hold our specimen information. Okay, and then save our specimen. Now I can say specimen DAO dot save, and I pass in that specimen object I've created above and terminate with a semicolon and save once again. Okay, uh, it's giving me an exception here I'm going to need to handle, so uh, Alt Enter. Now, we want to think about this, let's say surround with try catch. A lot of times when we encounter an exception, a lot of times there's a temptation to just leave e.printStackTrace or leave it empty. Don't do that. Uh, stop and think for a second. What would you do if you couldn't save? If you are not in a UI layer, your options are to either try to fix the problem, if there's an alternative way to save, or throw the exception up. If you are in a UI layer, which we are right now, uh, you have an option to try to fix the exception again, find another way to do it, or show a message to the user, uh, just inform them, hey, something went wrong. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to say toast dot make text uh, context this string. Okay. Um, whoops, this string r dot. Well, we're going to need to make a string. Let's hold that one for a second. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just plug a I'll just plug a temporary string in here. We'll say uh, unable to save specimen. Okay, comma, and then a duration, which is going to be toast dot length long, and then finally dot show to show the message. Now, uh, why do we want to do this? If we don't do this, we risk our program just dying without a reason, uh, and that's frustrating to the user. It's also frustrating to us when we don't understand why our program is dying. Now, we don't want to use string literals because we want to be internationalization friendly. So I'm going to save, I'm going to, I'm going to copy unable to save specimen to the clipboard. Uh, as a matter of fact, one second. Okay, let's see if we can do it straight from here. In fact, uh, uh, don't see any option to do it from here. I know in Eclipse it was easy to uh, just refactor and pop this into uh, strings XML, but I don't see a way to do it here. So I'm going to go to values, strings XML, and I'm going to make a new entry here. String name equals unable to save specimen. Okay, close tag, open tag, it automatically closed with string. Control V, unable to save specimen. So you see now I have this in a separate file that we're going to use for translation if we want to provide a different language translation. And the name is unable to save specimen. I save. I go back to GPS to plant, maximize. Now take a look at this. Instead of using that string literal, I can say r dot string dot unable, and you see already it's going to autocomplete for me, unable to save specimen. And I save. Okay, uh, now what we need to do is populate the specimen with values from the screen. Okay. Uh, first, let's see what we have. Well, we have a cache ID and a global unique identifier for our plant. Looks like at this point we're not assigning that global unique identifier, but we are assigning the cache ID. Now remember how we do this. Our application, we're going to start typing Magnolia, and as I type it's going to give an autocomplete, and I apologize the, uh, the contrast isn't very good here, but it's, it's giving me a list of possible options. As soon as I tab off of that plant name field, it records the cache ID of the plant that I selected from that dropdown. And it does that by using an on click and uh, an on, uh, I want to say an on click, and we'll see it here in just a second. On, on click and on selected. Those are the two methods it's using. So let's take a look. On selected. And I put this together in a previous video. Plant selected. Here we go. On item click and on item selected. Okay. No, we are proper. Okay. Just want to verify here. We are properly populating both the cache ID and the GUID. And that is the plant, not the specimen, but the plant cache ID and plant GUID. And that's important because uh, this sets up our foreign key relationship. So I say specimen 
dot set plant cash ID cash ID okay specimen set plant GUID GUID okay doesn't like my cash ID here what does it okay was it ca capital ID maybe yeah that's it cash ID the uh, specimen GUID and specimen cache ID we don't need to worry about yet because we haven't saved this to the database yet. And if you remember from a few minutes ago, we will pull the cache ID once we insert the record into the database. When we do a synchronization with the online data source, then we'll have an opportunity to sync the GUID as well. But that's, that's a far way away. Let's not worry about that right now. What we do need to worry about is latitude, longitude, description, and location. So let's take a look at whoops. Let's take a look and see what other uh, items we have up here. Latitude, longitude. Okay. Uh, doesn't look like we have location or description, so we'll need to get those. Let's see. ACT plant name, location request. Okay. The on create method. That's where we initialize our screen, where we uh, get access to the layout, and we are able to access items that are on the layout. So what we need to do is find out the name of this location and description field. I go back to the layout, XML, and I'm looking for description. We see LBL description. It's an autocomplete text, and it's called ACT description. Uh, for the location, ACT location, easy enough. So I go back to GPS a plant, and I say find view by ID. Let me start this one over. Find view by ID, r.id.act description. Okay, got that. And then find view by ID, r.id.act location. Now we're going to need to save these to fields. Remember in Android Studio, Control Alt F will save to a field. Uh, we're going to call the first one location. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, actually I actually should have called that one description. That's okay. We'll, we'll rearrange location. We'll use that one down below. So we'll call the lower one location. The upper one, Control-Alt-F, we'll call that description. Okay. Good enough for me. Now, one trick is, when we create these, it creates them as a very generic superclass type. We see it, it creates them as a view. We actually want it to be an auto-complete text view. So I'm going to change the declaration of the variables up above. That's going to require that I uh, cast down below. Casting is a little bit tricky, but a simple Alt-Enter and Enter will fix that. It's the easiest way to cast if you're not sure, gosh, what goes in the parentheses. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. We know that those should be autocomplete text views because when we look at the XML, the XML tag is autocomplete text view. If you get a class cast exception, check the XML, make sure that the tag name matches up very closely with the variable type. And if needed, make sure that the cast also matches with that XML tag name. At this point, we have the information we need to finish populating our specimen. So I'm going to say specimen dot set location, and we're going to say location dot get, te uh, get text, uh, that'll work, dot to string. Okay, uh, specimen set description location dot get text oh sorry description description dot get text dot to string okay finally uh, our uh, we need our latitude and longitude specimen dot set latitude latitude easy enough on that one specimen set longitude, and then longitude. Now the trick is that those are doubles, so we're going to need to convert them. We'll need to say double dot value of, I'm sorry, double dot two string. And this is an overloaded two string method. That means it can accept an additional parameter uh, that the two string method can accept multiple types of parameters because it's been set up that way. In this case, the double dot two string will accept a double value and return a string. That's a very efficient way to do it.
Now one more thing we can do. Notice that there is a picture URI uh, in the method right above us. Uh, what if we want to save that? Well, that's a local variable, so we're going to want to refactor this, and we're going to want to uh, extract and choose field. Okay, and hit enter. Okay, now you see we've changed the picture URI and the method above us from a local variable that's visible only within this method to a, a field which is visible in multiple methods. So what I can do now is say if picture URI is not null, then we'll say specimen dot set photo picture URI dot two string. Okay, and now we're saving the uh, picture as well. So I'm going to choose save, and then I'm going to deploy this in the debugger, and we'll take a uh, snap a breakpoint here, and also a breakpoint in our offline specimen DAO. Make sure we save, of course. And we'll snap a breakpoint right here on the save. And now we'll debug. It will take just a moment to raise the debugger, so I will pause the video for just a moment. Now the debugger has engaged, so we can insert some information about a plant. Uh, I'll try a new plant here. We'll say Circus canadensis. And we see it auto-completes when I pause and give it a moment. Circus canadensis, the eastern redbud we've been talking about so much. Uh, we'll change the location from Moscow, Ohio, to New Richmond. And we'll say a beautiful native tree. Remember, I have the debugger engaged, so I'm going to choose Save. As soon as I do, uh, we'll see that the debugger lights up. You can't see this on the video, I know, but it's flashing on my start bar. And we see now the line that used to be pink is, is uh, blue, which indicates that the debugger is engaged. I choose F8 to step over each line. So when we see a blue line, the IDE is waiting for my input. So I choose F8. Occasionally it gets a little bit bogged down like this. And it's simply populating our specimen now with this information. Okay. I did not take a picture, so the picture URI is going to be null. Now we're on the point where we are about to save the specimen. I can mouse over the specimen variable and I can expand it. And let's just verify that we do have information in here. Description, a beautiful native tree, latitude 0.0 because .0, I didn't push a latitude in, uh, location New Richmond, Ohio, uh, longitude 0.0, .0 again, photo is null. Plant cache ID is the local ID of this specimen, but more importantly, Plant GUID is that global unique identifier we were taking a look at earlier. Everything looks good. Now, in this case, I don't just want to execute this line. I want to see what happens when I step into this line. So I choose F7, and notice that we're now in the save method that we created earlier. So I F8 as we assemble together uh, this location. And now generally, when I get to the line where we have get writable database.insert, uh, as long as I don't get an exception there, we should be in good shape. I choose F8, and we see it does go to the next line, which is good news, and I'm going to choose F9. At this point, it looks very good. I could go ahead and pull the database off and inspect this record if I want, or I can just move on to the next step in our video series, which is where we're going to set up a fragment, and we're going to be able to look at the records that are in the database. So that will be our next video, and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.